Good evening, dear students. Welcome to our channel, Jitki Parshala. So today we will see page number 93. Okay, so the first topic that we are going to discuss today is art and paintings. So without wasting our time, let's begin. Hope all of you are ready with page number 93. So let's begin. 5.12, that is art and painting. Good evening to everyone, okay? So let's see the book. Paintings in Assam started to take proper set from the 17th century onwards, mainly with the patronage of the kings, while the pictorial books were developed in the satras like small pictured books of North India. So what we come to know here, that especially paintings was much developed. Okay, the painting in Assam got uh, much developed during 17th century and because of whom? Because of the kings, okay, because kings were also very much fond of paintings. The pictorial books, pictorial books means what? Yesterday also we have seen pictorial books where books were uh, not only text, okay, not only text, that means not only written letters, some pictures were also there, uh, which makes it easy to understand, okay. So let's see that one again. The pictorial books were developed in the satras. Satras we have already seen in class nine. So in sa some satras, pictorial books were developed, like the book of uh, North India. Most famous pictorial books of that times include Asti Vidyarnava, Ananda Lahiri, Chitra Bhagavata, Gita Govinda, Kumar Haran, Sankachur Vad, Love Kusar Yodha etc made on sachi path okay so these were some pictorial books okay pictorial books means uh, books where not only text some pictures also were there which uh, those pictures make easy to understand the written text and these some of the names we have got during that time which are most uh, famous pictorial books and these pictorial books were made on sachi path sachi path is a actually it is a bark of a tree you know the outer cover of a tree you know we call it bark so especially these pictorial books were written on bark of a tree known as sachi path the pictures were drawn with natural colors and during that time the colors that you have in present days were not present isn't it so what they what color they used to uh, use especially you will see here so to draw uh, some pictures on the sachi path natural colors were used a certain color was painted on Sanchi path first, at first on that entire Sanchi path. They used to put one single color. Then pictures of kings, palaces, deities, deities means gods, god and goddesses, animals, etc. were drawn as per the demand of the subject matter. So while uh, making pictures on pictorial books, at first they, they used to put a single color on the entire Sanchi path. And after that, with different colors they used to draw on that uh, bark of uh, the tree and what they used to do it it was connected or it depends on the demand that means if they are writing a book okay and in that book the it is the book is related or the story is related with what according to that story only they used to select or they used to draw the uh, photos or image on that like uh, it is written no here and, uh, then pictures of kings, palaces, deities, animals, etc. were drawn as per the demand of subject matter. Sub here, as per the demand of that story. Okay, hope you have understood. The famous pictorial book, Git Govind. On the right side, you can see an uh, image is given that it was from uh, Git Govinda. The pictures are also given, isn't it? And on the downside, you can see a pictorial books on Sachi path. So their letters are also there, written text are also there. And on the upper side, pictures are also there. So this kind of books, we call it, what? We call it uh, pictorial books. Okay, welcome, Sir Dalin. So pictorial books means what? Those books where both text and images or photos are present. And especially these books were written on what? Sachi path. Sachi path means bark of a tree. On the left side, you can also see an, uh, see a photo which is taken from Hasti Vidyarnava, which is also a famous pictorial book. So now let's turn the page. 
hope you don't have any doubt if you have any doubt at any time you can just write it down turn the page that is 94 we are discussing art and paintings isn't it so let's see what it is written here so where a uh, drone as per the demand of subject matter the the blank spaces were filled with flower cripples okay cripples etc so especially after drawing i think you can see here in that image if they have is given or not actually it is written that whenever pictorial books were written okay what they used to do they used to write uh, some sentences and they used to even uh, draw some pictures related to that story and whatever uh, blank spaces it remains on the corner of the book like you have also on the left side of this book and on the top side of this book there is there are some uh, blank spaces and on this on those blank spaces they also used to draw some flowers some pictures of disabled persons etc the color mostly used where so especially in pictorial books or during that time the color which was maximum used or mostly used were like uh, red green yellow and the black these were the colors which were mostly used during those times the book hasti vidyar namba written by sukumar barket okay this is very important you underline this one okay this question has been asked many times that who composed or who wrote hasti vidyar namba the sukumar barket okay had huge numbers of pictures of elephants of different sizes and colors so the Hasti Vidya Nava uh, book which was written by Sukumar Barkit, in that book pictures of elephants, especially of different sizes and colors are uh, made there, made especially on that book. The pictures in the book were drawn by two artists named Dilber and Dosai. This is also very important. There is a question in the exercise that the pictures in that book, that means the, in uh, Asti Vidyar Nama, although it was composed by Sukumar Parkit, whatever pictures are there, those pictures were drawn by two artists and their name was Dilber and Dosai. Okay, several books, later several of those books were published in print also. And later on, those books which were composed during that time were even published in later period. Okay, now let's see script, uh, sculptures. So here you can see a uh, picture is given. If you do not understand the meaning of sculptures, you can see here the old sculpture, sculptures of a Madan, uh, Madan Kamdev temple. A huge number of sculptures are seen mainly on the temples. Even if you go today also, if you visit the temples that we have in Assam or in the uh, rest part of India also, many types of sculptures can be seen. Some of uh, these are Okay, some of these are two dimensional wall statue and other are three dimensional complete statue. Okay, some are 2D and some are 3D statue. So nowadays we call it 2D, 3D, it is full form actually this two dimensional or three dimensional statues. The sculptures were made of stones, generally this is called the sculptures were made of stones as well as as well as with elephant trunk so not only in the stones but many of the sculptures were even made on the elephant trunk hope you know meaning of elephant trunk gold silver bronze and even on wood the sculptors mostly made sculptors means who made sculptures we call them sculpt sculptors mostly made sculptures of different deities so during that time they have also come um, made many uh, sculptures uh, like uh, the god of uh, like the statue of Shiva, Vishnu, Ganesha, Surya, etc. While well, sculpture of lion, sun, elephant, horses, horses, etc. are also seen. So not only of god and goddesses, but even of some uh, animal, animals like lion, elephant, horses, etc. are also made by the sculptors. Examples of beautiful sculptures of Assam can be seen in places like the Parvatiya in Facebook. So if you want to see the best sculptures in Assam, you can visit some of the places like the Parvatiya in Facebook, Bamoni Pahar, Madan Kamdev, Ambari, Dabaka, Surya Pahar, Borganga, Numaligarh, Deupani, Ojai, 
Divrugad, Supreshwar, etc. So here some of the good sculptures you can see. Though the Ganga Yamuna statue in the stone gate of the Parvatiya, so you can see in the gate of the Parvatiya, the statue of Ganga Jamuna. Okay, although these are smaller in size, but from the artistic viewpoint, it is well appreciated. Although the sizes of these uh, statues are smaller in shape, but its artistic value, its artistic view, if you go and see the art of this statue, then it is really well appreciated. The Parvatiya sculptures were made in 6th century, influenced by Gupta sculptures, and the Parvatiya or the Parvati sculpture were made during 6th century and those were made, these were, they, uh, they were generally influenced by the Gupta sculptures. So now let's see architecture. So now I think on the left side you can see an uh, image and many of you have uh, noticed which place it is because I think you have visited already this place. Architecture. Major, uh, sorry, majority of the old architecture in Assam were constructed in the Middle Ages and in the patronage of the Ahom and Coach King. So, majority of old architecture, the maximum of uh, architectures that you have in Assam, especially the old architectures, these were um, constructed during the Middle Ages because during that time the Ahom King and the Coach King were very much fond of architecture. The famous of those architectures of that time included, so some of the of that time are like Ranghar, Karenghar, Kalatalghar, and number of temples made by the Ahom kings is still bear testimony of the archi architectures of that time. So this place is still have the uh, value. If we go and see, if we go and visit these places, we can understand that what kind of architecture were there during those times. The most famous of the temples constructed during that time include Kamekya. So some of the important uh, temple okay, of that time are Kamekya, Ugratara, Omananda, Sivdol, Joydol, Devidol, Hakuadol, Hagrib, Madhav Temple of Haju, Sukreshwar, Devalaya Temple, Shiva Temple in Dergao, and Vishwanath, Navagra, etc. So these are some of the important temple which were constructed during that time. So let's turn the page. Okay, so let me see the piece. Okay, now for now page number ninety five is not it? Let's see ninety five. Okay, ninety five. The architectures of that uh, were made with some with stone and bricks. Hope from there, no. Isn't that it? Okay. Yes. So from there, no? I took a little bit time to take out the piece here. Okay, the architectures of that time were made with stones and bricks. Especially the architectures, whatever buildings were constructed during that time, were especially made up of stone and bricks. The construction of the multi story Talatalghar, okay, multi story means where uh, more than one stories are present, story are present. So, the construction of multi story Talatalghar was started by Ahom King Rudra Singha. So, remember this one, okay. So, the construction was uh, construction of Talatalghar was started during the time of Rudra Singha and it was later completed by Rajeshwar Singha. Talatalghar, the construction of Talatalghar was started during the time of Rudra Singha, but it was completed during the time of Rajeshwar Singha and the kings followed him. The Ranghar was constructed in two storied from the for, uh, for, uh, for enjoying celebration of Bhu festival in the court year. And especially Ranghar was constructed in two storied so that they can uh, watch or they can enjoy the celebration of Bhu festival in the Quoted in the ground. The roof of the Rangar was made in the style of play boat hail now. So if we go and see the roof of the Rangar, okay. 
you can see the on the right side there is, there is an image of wrong god so if you see that one you can just uh, understand that the roof is like a board that is opposite board is not it that is uh, facing downward the roof of the rangar was made in the style of clay board a number of stone bridges were also constructed during the time of the ahom kings and during that time many bridges were also constructed of those the bridges of namdang darika and jinjoy are still being used so the bridges which were constructed during the time of ahom period some of them are given here which are still being in use like darika or the bridges of namdang darika and jinjoy so in ahom period one indigenous type of concrete now you see it is very interesting so in ahom period what indigenous indigenous means indian okay or made in india a type of concrete pulp was made so that during that time although we can see that uh, rongar or uh, any other uh, uh, architect architecture of that time they have constructed so beautifully that it, still it is uh, it bears that testimony is not it but how they have constructed you see uh, during that time cement etc were not present so instead of that what they have used they used to mix up some of the thing like eggs okay eggs that you eat hope you know eggs then rice which rice it is bora rice fish fish which fish soul fish etc materials for framing the bricks so to connect so to join bricks especially what they have used they have used a paste and that paste was basically um, made up of what like eggs bora rice and soul fish and in by mixing all these things uh, is all these things they used to make some paste and with the help of that paste okay they used to connect stones while uh, while constructing buildings and just imagine the paste was so strong that is still these buildings these architectures are so good is not it there was an officer called changrang fukon to supervise the construction and measurement of roads palaces temples houses etc there is a question in the exercise which is related to uh, this changrang fukon okay there was an officer called changrang fukon and his duty was what his duty was to uh, supervise to look after the different construction that goes or uh, that uh, went under the ahom period like construction of um, construction and measurement of roads palaces even temples houses it was the duty of changrang fukon to look after the construction the stories written on the activities of changrang fukon is called the changrang changrung fukon's history so whatever he did in his lifetime it is written in a book it is written in history and that history is known as changrung fukon's history okay clear So tell me, do you have any problem here? If you have any problem, please uh, let me know. Whether you have understood or not, and thank you very much for all of you those who have pressed the like button. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay, shall we continue folk culture or uh, enough for today? Let me know. What about folk culture? Shall we uh, continue? Okay. then there you can see two uh, pictures are given one is uh, karbi dance another is bodo dance okay so okay let's uh, begin then all of you wants to continue so folk culture assam has uh, assam has a very rich cultural heritage so we have got this line again and again that assam is very rich in its cultural heritage in its culture Okay, so here the different types of folk cultures we have. In addition to the common cultural heritage, every tribe and sub tribe have their own rich traditional culture. So whatever tribes we have, whatever sub tribes we have in Assam, all of them 
have their own culture, isn't it? Every tribe has its own dialects, every uh, language they speak. So every tribe has its own dialects, folk literature, they have also their own literature. That's on the page 96. Ornaments, they have uh, all the tribes, sub-tribes, they have their own ornaments. Even food habit is also uh, different. Nursing culture, yes, the design of house, agriculture in way, fishing culture, various festivals, style of using can and bamboo, family and social relationship, customs and tradition, dresses, music, traditional music, instrument, all these things are separated or they have their own. Whatever cult, whatever tribes and sub-tribes we have in Assam, they have their own cultures, they have their own styles of using bamboo and uh, can and many other things. The natural feeling and expression of a society or community is reflected by its folk culture. So whatever culture we follow, on that it reflects our society. Okay. These traditional cultures of uh, practiced for years are acquired by the people without any formal training. So whatever our culture we are following, okay, everyone follows their own cultures. But do you think cultures, okay? So let's see whether network issue is there or not. Okay, so let's continue. These traditional cultures of practice for years are acquired by the people. We have acquired, we have not taken kind of formal education, we have not gone uh, to any school to learn this uh, cultures. But a person can understand the tradition of others' culture through special observation only. So you have acquired your culture. Without going to any school and colleges, you have learned about your culture. But to understand others' culture, okay, but to understand others' cultures, how can we learn others' culture? We by observation. We have to observe other cultures nicely to understand their cultures uh, nicely. Of late, the social scientists have shown keen interest in the traditional folk cultures of different group of people of the world. So although it is late, but in the later part, even the social scientists who think about the society, they have shown more interest in the folk cultures okay, of different groups of people of the world. Generally here, folk culture means what? The culture that everyone has. You have your own cultures. Other people have their own cultures, okay, whatever we have inherited, whatever we have acquired from our parents, our grandparents, from our society, that is our what? Folk cultures. Okay, now the time has come. Everyone from whatever community, from whichever community you belong, it's your responsibility, it's your duty to preserve your folk culture. A few elements of folk cultures of Assam are briefly discussed below. So some of the Folk cultures, some of the cultures of Assam is discussed below. Number one is Bihu. Okay, on the left side you can see in page number 96 there is a uh, picture where some people with garland in hand, they are worshipping some uh, cows and ox. And what is written on the left side just below that uh, image you see. Lau ha bengena ha bosore bosore barija. Guru Bihu. The festival of Pau. Okay, this is also a culture. Now you see that uh, paragraph, Bihu festival. This is very important topic. I marks you can hope from this. Bihu, short note on Bihu. Okay. So Bihu is the national festival of Assam. Three Bihus, Bihu festivals are observed in Assam. So Bihus are of three types. Number one is Bohag, which is also known as Rangali Bihu. Second, it comes Kati, which is known as Kongali Bihu, and third one is Mag Bihu. Bihu are observed in the month of Baisak, Boha, Kati, Kartik, and the Mag, respectively. Okay. So, Rangali, Kongali, and Bhogali, actually. So, now Bihu is celebrated by all people of Assam with traditional deity. So, people of Assam, especially the Assamese people, they followed with full energy, full respect. They observe what they observe and celebrate Bihu. Three Bihus are there and all of these three, they celebrate very nicely. The Bohag Bihu is celebrated from the last day of Assamese month. So 
to uh, the first six days of Bohag. Okay, so first it is written the Bohag view is celebrated from the last day of Asamis month of so uh, to the first days, first six days of Bohag. The last day of the month is called Sankranti or Domahi. It is April. Okay, Devraj. So now next is uh, the last day of this month is called Sankranti or it is also known as Domahi. And that day is celebrated as Guru Bihu. Okay, Bihu festival for let's turn the piece. For cows, hope you have also seen, we also worship uh, once in a year uh, for cows or we organize some programs some in some cultures, hope you have seen, isn't it? Similarly in Bihu also, they observe Guru Bihu. Cows are an important uh, part of the life of the Assamese people, not only uh, Assamese people, for other also it is very much uh, important who mostly depend on agriculture and that is why the day is dedicated in the name of cows. Here cows, not only cows, here even ox also included, okay, so generally Assamese people they say uh, guru, okay, whether it is male or female, they call uh, especially cows or ox, they don't uh, call it separately, for them cows mean or uh, guru means both. So here also it is written uh, cow but they worship both because it is written that uh, who mostly depend on agriculture for them cows are important not only cows oxes are also important for those people who depend on agriculture isn't it cows are especially treated on that day and in that day they worship cows a special treatment is given for the cows on that day cows are given a good bath at first they uh, they take or they took or they generally uh, take the animal nearby uh, in nearby some uh, water bodies where they wash it, that means they take the bath. Cows are given a good bath in the rivers and ponds. The first day of the month of Bohag is called Manu Bihu. So the first day of the month Bohag is called Manu Bihu. Bihu for human. People wear new clothes on that day and it is a very great day for them. So for, uh, on that day, they put new clothes. Okay, people wear new clothes on that day. And the younger ones seek blessing from the elders. And those who are young children, younger people, they go to the to the uh, some senior people, uh, get some elder people to take blessings. Different different sports and cultural activities are organized in public places. And during this view, different types of sports, different types of cultural programs are organized in some public places. Bihu means sorry, Bihu Nam Husari. Remember this one because it will help you to write the short note. Bihu Nam Husari followed by Bihu dance are performed by the groups of people in all houses and they and uh, the Assamese people they form some groups and they and they go house to house to perform Bihu dance and Husari. The hosts uh, welcome, the host welcome them, the host welcome means in wh whose home they go, the people of that home they welcome these people and seek blessing from them the women of upper assam perform typical jang bihu so there is a question in the exercise what is a uh, what is a jang bihu just you what is a jang bihu okay in youtube if you search what is a what is jang bihu just you write g j e n g or either j d n g okay what is jang bihu if you search you will get a video okay the non, the answer i have provided earlier you can write down from there okay so in upper assam especially the women perform a typical dance which is known as jang bihu you can go deeply there about the meaning of jang bihu we will not go so deeply because here it is given only one mark it gives only one mark so you can write the definition from there so different communities of assam observes bohag bihu with their own styles in a befitting manner so whatever the, uh, whatever communities are there not only the assamese people of, of assam but other communities also they observe bihu but they observe in a little different way so bodo raba karbi missing deuri tiwa etc communities have different dresses songs 
customs to observe bihu in a very colorful manner they have also bihu now dimasa people have also bihu but name is different similarly all these community they have their bihu but the name is a little bit different and in that bihu especially they put their own traditional dresses now vast assamese culture means this multicolor cultures of all ethnic group of people so here assamese cultures means the cultures of all the community all the ethnic group all the tribal tribal people that presents in assam so all include when the cultures we mixed about all the people all the community we call it multicultural of assam the people also greet each other with bihu ones different tribes of the state also observes bihu with their own traditional ways so all the people greet each other that means they wish they wish each other with bihu ones they give and they give some blessing they seek blessing which we call bihu ones and different tribe peoples different tribals of assam they have bihu where uh, in, in their own area they observe that one but the name is different which i have already told so now let's see the uh, next paragraph some of the old traditions of observing bihu is not seen in modern times but in ancient time the way of observing bihu was a little bit different and that uh, way is how people used to observe bihu in earlier days that is missing in present days instead programs and different sports activities are organized in public places in towns and cities so whatever cultures whatever uh, ways of observing bihu was there in earlier days that is missing but instead of that cultural programs and different kind of sport activities are being organized in towns and cities perhaps ahom king rudra singh of fast organized bihu in public place by organizing the festival in the courtyard of rangar so first person to celebrate bihu in uh, in a, a bihu in an organized manner or we can say that for uh, in united you know you see this one in a public place that is for public for uh, uh, in a such place where all the people were invited and where they gathered together and finally they observed bihu it was uh, for the first time organized that public uh, bihu by rudra singh in, in his kingdom In, and that Rongar we have already seen so nearby or there in Rongar. During the British rule, some of the conservative Assamese people looked down upon the love song sung in Bihu, but at the same time, some persons with modern outlook brought Bihu to the towns by organizing the festival in open stages. But during the time of British rule, some of the people, especially the Assamese people, were not in the favor to sing love song during Bihu, but the people who had a modern outlook they had given more preference for such and nowadays even in open stage also this kind of songs are sung the bohag bihu dance is accompanied by some instruments so the bihu dance is especially accompanied that means bihu song is generally sung uh, by some uh, or by taking the help of some instrument like dhol that is drum horn pipe that is in assam we call it pepa flutes siphon gagana etc which are different in different communities okay so these kind of instruments are generally used while performing bihu dance some other festivals are observed in some other, some places which are homogeneous to bohag bihu but some in some other places people also observe uh, some other festivals but those festivals are similar to bohag bihu among those deul in darang okay deul the people of darang they say it a deul but this deul is also similar to bihu batheli sweri bargopal etc in old and divided kamrup bas puja in gwalpara are important so this one bas puja is especially important i have not seen about other but this bas puja sometimes it has arts it has been arts that where bas puja is observed it is uh, gwalpara okay or what is the homogeneous name of bihu what is the homogeneous name of bihu or what is another name of bihu in gwalpara the answer will be bas puja remember this one okay turn the page 98 kati bihu is not it there from there no
Okay. Kati Bihu is observed on the first day of Asami's month of Kati. People observe fasting in that day. So generally people observe fasting on the day, in that day. And uh, they light lamp under Tulsi and Pedi fields. Okay, they, in this festival especially they light lamps and they keep generally under Tulsi uh, plant and even they keep in the Pedi fields in the evening. Sky lamps, sky lamps, Akash Bhati. You know, Akash Bhati, with the help of some paper, no? Uh, they made it... Uh, some it look it is the shape in uh, we can say in circle also or of different types it may be in the shape of kite also and they what they do they put a fire by using some uh, fuel like kerosene and they live on the uh, sky hope you have seen that one akash bati okay so are also lead in the uh, sky lamps are also lit in the pale evil bodo uh, people lead lights under cactus that is sisu tree with holiness okay so cactus is uh, a holy plant especially for the bodo people some religious faiths are also associated with these traditions so people who worship cactus they have also some religious faith celebration of mark view now the another view third view it comes now mark view or bhogali view it is known as bhogali view because here different kinds of books different kinds of food items are generally prepared so celebration of mark bihu or bhogali bihu starts on the last night of asami's month pus with community festival so in this especially they or they call uh, their uh, guest their relatives and they organize some uh, programs especially different kinds of food items as i have already said they prepare and they provide this to their relatives the last day of the month of pus is called uruka and the last day of the month uh, of pus is called Uruka. People construct Bhelagar, temporary hut made up of bamboo and straw. Okay, Bhelagar on the left side you can see it is mezi, but nearby this they made a small hut which is made up of bamboo and straw. And mezi in the field, so this is mezi, okay. In the field and community feasts are organized near those. So nearby this mezi, they make what Bhelagar, Bhelagar means, Bhela means to gather they gather their, their relatives, their people, they gather there in that villa where they organize programs where they make different kinds of food items and they stay there together for uh, some hours. So now you see, on the first day of the month of Magh, the mazes are set fast, uh, set on fire and people take blessing from the god of fire. So on the first day of Magh, okay, it is in January, it is in the middle of January, so there, what they do, first day of the month, they put fire on the mezi and all the people starts taking blessing from uh, the god of fire. People also prepare different traditional snacks. So here different kinds of food items, sweets, jalpan, etc. are prepared in the festival and delivered uh, and they provide this to guests. Okay, And after making all these food items, they provide this to guests their guests during the time of month all types of foods become available so in january especially different kinds of food items are available so it is known as what bhogali the mark behu is called bhogali because people observe this festival with happy food enjoy enjoyment that is bhog or bhoga okay so especially in the month of uh, month january that is uh, after almost 14 50 14 so different kinds of food items are available and in this food in this view maximum items are prepared so it is known as bhogali bihu various festivals are observed in different parts of india which are similar to bohag mag and kati festival of assam so here in assam we call it bihu by different names and this kind of uh, festivals are also observed in outside assam and there they have different kinds of name especially based on their own traditional a cultural assimilation of different tribes and communities is reflected in new festivals of assam and in new festival of assam different kinds of cultures are generally seen so now shall we continue shall we complete this or enough for today
I think up to page number 99 it has, no? So what do you say? Shall we continue or let it keep for tomorrow? Let's continue tomorrow, I think, for 20, for 20 30 minutes. We'll have, uh, tomorrow is Sunday. So not tomorrow, on Monday. Shall we continue this on Monday? No, yes, I can complete, but let me ask others also what they say. Suraj Singh said that on Monday. What about others? We don't have uh, so uh, more lessons now, but uh, we can continue now, sir. Is it? Okay, let's continue then. If everybody are so eager to finish this, then why should I get late? No? Okay, folk songs. So here we will see about the different types of song of Assam. Assam has a rich uh, tradition of folk songs which are sung in different occasions and in different environments. So here in Assam, different kind of folk songs we have which are sung, especially sung in different occasions. Some of these have been obsolete and others are following with force. Some are generally uh, very simple which are singing by sim uh, some Yes, yes, we will continue that one, Suraj Singh. Like marriage song, you see, in marriage song, we, uh, these are known as Bia Nam, appeasing song, Nisukeni Geet, Kamrupi and Gwalpariya folk songs are most popular among other folk like Ainam, Hainam, Dotara, Okay, okay, Rahul Chauhan. Totara, that is Tokari song, Sia Geet, Nangeli Geet, Cowboy song, Sera Dhek, etc. So these are some of the types of uh, songs that are generally sung here in Assam. Okay? So here this, uh, it's not so important to remember all the types of uh, the song which are sung here. We will see the exercise if we find any kind of questions, we will remember this one. Okay? I will tell you later whether these are important or not. But I have not found any question in the last five years. A number of folk song artists of the state, including Khagan Mohanta. So some of the folk song artists, famous artists of Assam, like Khagan Mohanta, Rameshwar Pathak, and Pratima Pande Burwa. Now this Pratima Pande Burwa is important because there is a question you underline here. There is a question in the exercise. Pratima Pande Burwa have been honored with. She so got some uh, award also. So honored with Sangeet Natak Academy Award. While Pratima Pande Burwa, a prominent Gwalpariya folk song artist, was also awarded the Padma Sri by the government of India. Okay, so these are some of the things that you have to remember this underline. When you will see the exercise, I uh, will uh, write from here. So on the left, uh, right side, you can see the Borthol dance. Okay, how the people are dancing there, that type of dance is known as Borthol. In addition to the folk song, songs, Assam also has a rich tradition of folk dances. Not only song, in Assam we have different types of dances too. Dances and Ojapali is one of the most popular among those. So Ojapali dance is one of the most famous dances of dance of Assam. In addition to the folk songs, Assam also has a rich tradition of folk dances and Ojapali is one of the most popular among those. Ojapali has two styles. Okay, Ojapali form has especially two types. Number one is Vyas Oja and Sukanani Oja. This is also important. It has a question in the exercise. The stories of Ramayana and Mahabharata are sung in Vyas. So Vyas Oja are especially what you can see here. Ramayana and Mahabharata. The stories of Ramayana and Mahabharata are especially shown in Vyas. While in Sukanani story is sung for appeasement of uh, Manasa Devi. Appeasement means to make happy, no? To Manasa Devi, especially Sukhanani, Sukhanani types are performed. Especially this, you see, Ojapali is more popular in the district of Kamrup, Nalbari, Borpeta, and Dharam. Two popular Ojapali performers like Lalit Chandra Nath 
and Kinaram Nath were awarded the Sangeet Natak Academy Awards. So these two people who are uh, very popular Ojapali performers known as uh, Lalit Chandra Nath and Kinaram Nath were awarded with the Sangeet Natak Academy. Academy Awards. The other most popular of folk dances include, so some other most popular folk dances, uh, types of dances are Devupadulia, Bordulia, uh, Devdhani of Darang, Mohano, Mohan, uh, Moho, I think it is Borthal, Dance, Thiyanam, Ojapali, etc. of Lower Assam, Dhulia, Ojapali, Jhumar of Upper Assam, etc. So there are many names that you have to remember. But you know that history is just a game of year and name. So it is very much necessary to remember these things. The whole society is like a book to study the folk culture of it. And the entire society of Assam is like a book where you can study about the different folk culture that Assam has. To know valuable things of folk cultures, one has to observe the activities and behaviors of the common people of the society. And if you want to understand deeply about the folk cultures of Assam, then what you have to do, you have to observe this society very nicely. Now you have to observe the behavior of the common people. Then only you can understand the different folk cultures of Assam. So with this, we complete our relation. So now we have finished this one. So if we see the exercise, Shall we see the exercise or on Monday we want to see? Okay, let us stop here. Okay, let us stop the, uh, let us stop here. Let in the session here. If you have any doubt in this, uh, Vinita Bajaj. Okay. Bajaj, but uh, because of rain, uh, there are some, uh, there is some network issue. We have to end the session for it uh, for that one. Okay, but tomorrow or either on Monday uh, for for a short while we will uh, be live once again to discuss the answer. Here we have some uh, network issue. So some others are also complaining that they have network issue. Okay. But if you have any network, if you have any problem regarding the question and answer, just uh, write down in the comment section that which answer you have not got. I will try to show you the answer in the book. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone, for uh, being with us in this session. So next day with the new topic, new lesson, we will be live one second to discuss the remaining part of our uh, syllabus. So take care. Stay at home. Stay safe. Bye bye.